Our first speaker today is one of Monash's newest lecturers in the School of Biology, Dr. Kay Hodgins, who recently arrived from Canada where she completed her PhD and postdoctoral research in both Toronto and Vancouver. Kay's research focuses on the genomics of adaption and plant invasion and the biology of plant reproduction. This also includes looking at crop evolution and adaption to climate change. One place where there are very few plants is the middle of the desert in Nevada, but Kay is part of the Burning Man Festival there that takes place, specifically the Dark Sparkle Science Camp. Kay is also a bit of an athlete, last year completing the Boston Marathon, and she also does Muay Thai. That's the martial art, not to be confused with the cocktail of similar name. Please welcome Kay, talking on, does my forest look good in these jeans? Thanks. Thanks. Hello. Um, so I'm an evolutionary biologist, and I'm really interested in trying to identify the genes and the genetic differences that contribute to adaptation. And today I'm going to tell you about some of that work that I'm doing in uh, conifers. And this is part of a large project led by uh, Sally Aiken at the University of British Columbia. And so the project is called Adapt Tree. And there's a huge number of people involved because it's a huge, um, there's a huge amount of work that we have to do to um, uh, complete this project. And so the goal of it basically is to use genomic information, climatic information, and other types of data to um, sort of improve our reforestation and forest management practices um, to mitigate some of the negative impacts of climate change. And so climate change has already had significant impacts on the health of our forests. And in Canada, one of the um, sort of best known examples is uh, the mountain pine beetle, where there has been um, sort of warmer winters, and this has led to improved overwintering success of the mountain pine beetle. And it's thought to have contributed to uh, the large scale infestations and destruction of our uh, forests. And so here you can see the red is all dead trees that have been attacked by the mountain pine beetle and killed. So this has had a huge impact on our forests as well as forest dependent communities and the economy. And so this is just one example of the impacts climate change is already having. So foresters have been interested in understanding how tre trees respond to climate for a really long time. And one of the methods that they've gone about um, um, doing to understand this is called uh, provenance trials. And these are field experiments where they take individuals from throughout the range of a species and they bring them to a common environment and they grow them up. And the differences between populations and among individuals are going to be mainly due to genetic differences. And then they've looked to see, okay, which populations do well under these uh, climatic conditions. And typically what they find is that local populations do well compared to the foreign um, individuals. And this is um, called local adaptation. And so just to illustrate this point a bit more, that populations are genetically adapted to the, to the historic climate, I have this diagram here where um, individuals contain, have genotypes that predispose them to do well in warm conditions, and these guys are found in warm climates, whereas individuals that have genotypes that predispose them to do well in cold climates are found in cold climates. But as the climate warms, there's going to be a mismatch between the genetics of the individuals and the climates that they're found in. And this is going to have implications for forest productivity and the economy. So we're really interested in trying to identify what are the genes that are contributing to this local adaptation to climate and what are the genetic differences. And to do this, um, we focus on two economically important tree species in Western Canada, lodgepole pine and white spruce. And so we've um, gotten samples from a really large number of uh, populations, more than that could be um, could, uh, conducted in a provenance trial. And they're from across uh, quite a range of climatic variation. 
And so again, we're trying to find the genetic differences that contribute to local adaptation to climate. And so we need to look at the DNA. So we're looking at the uh, genetic instruction manual of trees and looking for differences in the sequences among and within individuals. But there's going to be tons of these differences, right? So we have to go find them and then say, well, what are the ones that are most important to adaptation? And so there's a number of different ways you can go about doing this. One way that we've done is to look for associations between these differences and the traits of an organism. So um, in this example, you may find that the GG individuals are small and the AA individuals are large. And so that would be an indication that this variant is important in determining height. Another way is to look at associations between the frequency of these different genetic variants in the population and um, some environmental variable so this, in the source population. So for example, here we have a high frequency of the A variant in the valley and a high frequency of the G variant up high um, in elevation. And so this suggests that in the past there's been selection for the AA variant in the valley and the GG variant up high. Um, so in order to do this, we've had to grow out and measure the traits of a large number of individuals. So we have grown and measured 10,000 individuals and we grew them up in common environments in a number of different common environments for both species. And we look at the um, so we plot out the distribution of these traits on the landscape. We see geographic patterns that are indicative of local adaptation. And here's one example for uh, spruce, uh, where we looked at cold injury in these artificial freezing experiments. And basically, we found, as you would predict, less injury in climates that are colder. But what about the gen genetic component? So this has been a big challenge. So the human genome is a big genome. There's about 30 billion DNA letters, or billion, 3 billion DNA base pairs, and only about 21,000 genes. <coughs> and so the fraction of the genome that codes for genes is very small. And changes in the genes are more likely to cause changes in the organism than um, other areas of the genome, which uh, commonly code for repetitive sequence and changes in these don't really uh, usually affect the uh, traits of the organism. The Connor for genomes, by contrast, are huge. There's 20 billion DNA letters in them and around 30,000 genes. And a very small fraction of the DNA actually codes for something that may actually cause differences in traits. So, we had to use sort of new methodology in order to pull out all of the genes and sequence those because it's still not technologically or financially feasible to sequence everything in all these individuals. So we did that, and even still, we sequence about four trillion base pairs of DNA. It's all the raw data. And so if we wanted to contribute to deforestation and print all of this out on a sack of A4 paper, it would reach the height of Mount Everest, just to give you an idea of the amount of data we're dealing with. And then we had to line it all up and look for these genetic differences. And we did that, and it was a lot of work and computationally challenging. And now we're onto the part where we're trying to find which of these differences are important to the trees in determining the response to climate. And so here's an example of one analysis uh, called the random forest analysis, where we found about 10 SNPs that predict about 30% of the variation in frost injury for um, spruce. And then we can use these data in order to, um, so we can use the SNP, these SNPs or the genetic differences in order to try and predict the phenotypes or the traits in the different environments. And so this leads us back to the question, what should we plant? So every year in Alberta and BC, 150 million lodgepole pine and interior spruce trees are planted. So we have a real opportunity here to try and make really smart decisions with respect to climate change and sort of uh, potentially do some assisted migration within a species. 
So which should we plant? Should we plant individuals that have the genetic makeup that will allow them to deal well with the future warm, warmer climates? Or should we say, oh, well, there's a lot of uncertainty with respect to the genomic predictions and the climatic predictions, so we might want to diversify our uh, stocks that we plant. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. I'd like to thank uh, members of the ADAPT Tree team, particularly Sally Aiken, Sam Yamin, and uh, Tan Lee Wayne, and members of the Aiken Lab, as well as our funded sources. Thanks. <laughs>